Hey guys, hope you're all doing good. And I'm going to be the primary presenter for today. HVAC work in companies like General Motors, Ford, and Hyundai. Okay, so like I said, we provide advanced project-based engineering courses by partnering with subject matter experts who work in reputed tech companies. We hope to provide a solution to bridge the gap between academia and industries. And we have been quite successful in doing that by helping people get internship opportunities and full-time opportunities within and outside India. So let me get started with a couple of, uh, with basically this uh, simple statement here. What is the purpose of HVAC systems? So it's mainly used, uh, you know, to create a comfortable environment at the end of the day. And its applications, there's a lot of applications, uh, which, you know, I'll be talking about. But in general, the main purpose of HVAC system is to make sure you have your temperature, humidity, air movement, fresh and clean air is present and noise levels are controlled in any type of environment. Now, this could be an office, this could be a mall, it could be a stadium or it could be a passenger car. All right. So anywhere you have uh, these type of control parameters, which you need to optimize, you know, you would basically call that as an HVAC system. All right. So based upon these uh, five points, can anyone tell me, and again, this is primarily intended, this question is primarily intended towards beginners. So can anyone give me examples of HVAC systems that they've encountered? For example, like a car or hospitals, exactly. What else? If you have large, large public gathering spaces, you know, those are areas where controlling temperature, humidity, air movement, fresh and clean air is quite hard. And also noise level is also part of the HVAC system. Any, any for example, um, any uh, air handling equipment that you use should not provide a lot of noise and nowadays as part of the as part of engineering the environment soundproofing is also being part of making a comfortable environment data center exactly that's a very good answer so data centers are basically places where large computing units are maintained so for example companies like facebook google amazon they process all their data through these data centers and thermal management in these data centers is very important in these data centers you don't have a lot of uh, human beings sitting and walking around all the time. It's mostly these machines and the priority there is to make sure that the, these machines are operated at a comfortable temperature, right? And in those cases, the HVAC design are, or our optimization objectives are completely different, but that's a great example. So what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be starting from scratch and describe, we are going to be describing the fundamental blocks of HVAC system. Now, any HVAC system that you can take, it could be of any system, it has these five, five subsystems, okay? So this could be the HVAC system in your car or it could be a hospital, it doesn't matter. It could be a data center, it doesn't matter. It contains these five units. Now, any type of HVAC system configuration can be explained with these five units, but not all of them necessarily have these five units. So understanding these five units is all about is what HVAC engineering is all about. So if you're understanding these systems, if there's a particular subsystem that you're interested in, you know, you can see that there are, if there are any projects in that area and you can start working on that. So basically it's air side system, chilled water system, refrigeration system, heat rejection, and then control system, right? This seems very simple. So we are just going to break down each of these systems, go step by step, and then talk about how these sub parts or subsystems are optimized using computer simulations. So first let's take a look at the air system, right? So this is called as, this is also called as the air side loop. This is probably the easiest thing to understand. So for example, let us say that you are in a small room and then this is the supply air and then you have a, you, have, you basically have a duct through which return air goes and whatever supplies this air forms the air loop, right? So you're supplying in air and you're returning air back to the atmosphere. This is the air side loop. What's the objective here? You have some, you have a space where you're trying to control temperature and humidity, right? That is what you call as the condition space. Now, a very good air system should make sure that it, when it is set at a particular point, which is called as the set point, it needs to make sure that if there is too much moisture or too much sensible heat, it removes it. Or if it's, if there is less sensitive, sensible heat and less moisture, it adds it. So that is basically a, the characteristic of a, perfect, perfectly working air side loop, right? So again, if you look at this particular drawing here, it makes 
a lot of sense. So let me just use my annotation tool here. Give me a second. So for example, let us say that this is your condition space and you are trying to keep it at 23.9 degrees Celsius. So you have your supply fan, which is going to pass through the uh, pass through air. And then what's going to happen is this air is going to come out. So SA stands for supply air, RA stands for return air and EA stands for exhaust air. So what you basically do is uh, you need to understand that it, like, you know, for example, when you're in, even in your house, when you're having air conditioning, right? Some amount of cool air escapes, right? So if there is a way to kind of use that and reuse that, then there is always, there is definitely an efficiency point there. So what you do is a part of the mixed say 25% or 30% of the return air is basically fed back into the in intake circuit. OA stands for your outer air. That's the freshest air that you can get, but that is usually at a higher temperature and your return air is usually at a less temperature. So when you mix it, you know, you basically save some energy and that's why there's a mixing circuit. So this is a very simple air side circuit. Okay. Mm -hmm.